Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel. First and foremost, I'd like to start this lesson by giving all praises, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rechah, Kodash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well, taught me this 100% truth. Salutations unto 144,000 doing the work of the Lord in all truth, honor, and sincerity. Um, Shout out one to, uh, you know, the one third, the great multitude, the men, women and children who believe in this word, being taught unto them. It's your brother Amna wa Allah. I'm back at you with another lesson entitled YOLO, right? Now, uh, I actually came across this post on the gram last week. And, uh, you know, I've made sure I screenshotted it. And uh, I wanted to, to get into it. But um, yeah. uh, I did other other videos, but there was quite a few precepts I wanted to get into on this one, and uh, it wouldn't have been fitting to to do my videos in the you know the the usual style that I do them. So you know, I finally you know got round to having some time to accommodate for this video. So uh, yeah, I pray Lord willing, it's edifying. You know. So yeah, as you can see in the post, it says, um, I'm kind of glad you only live once. I ain't doing this again. And obviously, yeah, people laughing and giving their stupid comments and whatnot, as they do, liking a photo, things of that nature. But it's like, you know, there's a scripture that says, that literally says, you err not knowing the scriptures, man. Meaning you error not knowing the scriptures, man. <laughs> because... You know, and you, then you got like the likes of the music. You know, I remember you had that big hit back in the day, man. Or, or no, early twenty tens maybe. You know, you had that song by you know, what Drake and Lil Wayne and whatnot called uh, Yolo, right? You know, you only live once. That's the man on Nicky Yellow. I remember that, that that song was big, but you know, basically what it did is that it pushed that that uh, mindset, that belief that. You only live once, and then you pretty much, you know, people believe, yeah, you, you live this one life, right? So live it right, all right? Live your best life, whatever. And then you simply just die, and then either you go to heaven forever, or you just burn in hell forever. And, and that's that, you know? I mean, really, that's far from the truth. Whether you're good, bad, all right? Edomite or Israelite, we all, we all go to the same place when we die. The dust goes back down to the earth, you get buried, and the spirit returns to the one who gave it. The scriptures literally say that. Uh, so, yeah, I just wanted to kind of clarify that, you know. We have been here more than once, all right? That's why we have such phenomena like deja vu, you know. Where for that brief moment you get that feeling of, well, hold on a minute, I've been here before. You know, how can how do you, how do you explain deja vu if you only live once? You know, so uh, people are bugged out, man, because a lot of these people that would like this comment will be oh, will be the same people who within a week or two or three. Oh my goodness, I just experienced deja vu. But hold on a minute, you don't believe in reincarnation, so what the fuck are you talking about, man? All right. So, anyways, let us uh, bring up precepts to cut this and prove that you know. We've been here multiple times. And uh, for those who are of the elect, right, this is pretty much, uh, you know, your last incarnation, man. You know, the elect are going to be the first fruits of the kingdom of heaven. Some are going to die on this side, but they're, they're, they're going to be raised up first. So pretty much this is the last time for the elect that they're going to experience uh, reincarnation Alright uh, Two thirds of the nation of Israel Will experience reincarnation As they will be um, As they will be The sons and daughters of the elect in the kingdom Alright So that will be their spirits coming back And then of course The heathens, the other nations Will continuously experience Reincarnation In the kingdom Because they're not going to be made perfect like us and as we know, according to Romans 6 and 23, that the wages of sin is death. 
So by default, these other nations will be dying because they're going to be perfect. They're going to go off. They're going to sin. So they're going to die, come back, you know, spend a certain amount of time in the spirit world, three, four generations later in their family line, come back down here on earth and live out their judgment. That's the, that's the process. That's how reincarnation works. So now let's get scriptures to validate. <laughs> So this is 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Mashiach, that everyone may receive the things done in his body. According to that, he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Okay, so, hey man. I remember I was in a, I was in a supermarket the other day. I saw this little Edomite kid in a wheelchair. And he, he man, he was like, he was through, man. He, he. You know, couldn't speak properly. He, he looked a bit like a downy. Like he had, he had special needs, right? He had disabilities. And in my head, I was just thinking, damn, I like, yeah, must have been one wicked motherfucker, man. Okay, you know, it's like you have some children out here born with no leg, no arm, no eye, whatever. All right, that's that's the that's a punishment, man. Or you might have it to where, you know, the Lord has that particular spirit down on a body to say, well. When you seven years old, you're gonna get eaten alive by a dog. Or you're gonna go to a zoo or whatever, and a lion's gonna just devour you. Or you're gonna be fourteen, twenty, fifty, whatever, and and you're gonna get run over by that car, that bus, that train, whatever the case may be. That is judgment from the heavenly Father for either things you've done in this life or things you've done in your past lives. Okay. And uh, this is why it's a, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power because you might see a wicked nigger out there and you're like, well, 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 this guy's wicked. Why ain't he dying? Why ain't he being judged? Well, it says here in Second Peter 2 and 9, the Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. So the Lord has got some of these wicked spirits out here. <laughs> You'd see, you know, looking in the flesh, you're like, oh, they're doing so well. Like, they're prospering. But they're wicked. How so? Right? Well, we just read it here. The Lord knows how to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. So some people's judgment is to get shot in the head, to get stabbed. Some people's judgment is uh, the, the nuclear missiles that's going to be fired and at the end of, of, of uh, Esau's age. So... You know, the scriptures say, well, we're going to get it anyway, you know. For I know it will be well with the, the righteous, but it shall not be well with the wicked, roughly paraphrasing Ecclesiastes 8. All right, so you don't want to really play that game. You don't want to swim in them kind of waters with the most high. Start getting all like, well, so-and-so is, is wicked and he's gotten away with it for so long. So therefore, I'm just going to follow suit because what the most high might have a man for 15 years get away with you might not get away with for six months <laughs> you know the scriptures say don't be as one that tempteth the lord man you're asking for trouble if you do that okay so when you die as we read in second corinthians 5 and 10 you have to appear before the judgment seat of the heavenly of, of, of the lord man Okay, in which you're giving your judgment. Okay, so you did this, you did that, you did this, you did that. Okay, so therefore, in your next life, you're going to come back, uh, uh, you know, for all well, these Edomites that are dying now, they're hearing, well, you're going to come back a slave. All right, because we're at the end of Esau's age and captivity is coming for these devils, man. So a lot of them, they're hearing their judgment. Yeah, when you come back, you're going to be a slave on so-and-so's cotton field. You're going to do this, you're going to do that. I'm going to cause this particular Israelite to, to blast you with the laser beams out of his eye at this appointed time. And that. So you, you and, and then you live out your judgment here on earth. This is the place of judgment, okay? And we can prove that with a scripture. Ecclesiastes 3 and 16, and it says... Uh, hold on a minute. Let us say, um, let us start from 15 and just take a sip of this.
Ecclesiastes 3 and 15, that which hath been is now, and that which is to be hath already been, and the Most High requireth that which is past. So the Most High, you know, these devils want you to be in that forgive and forget spirit. Oh, slavery never happened. Oh, just forgive and forget. Oh, that wasn't me. That was my ancestors. Well, we got scriptures to cut that, and we will. All right? But, um... <clears throat> As the scripture is saying, man, the most high require of that which is past. So, even if Jake <clears throat> want to forgive and forget, when the Lord changes the Israelites, pursuing to First Corinthians, the latter verses of First Corinthians chapter fifteen, they ain't gonna be in that forgive and forget spirit. They're gonna be in that that vengeful spirit, that recompense spirit, that I'm about to fuck your eat my ass up spirit. That's what's getting ready to happen, right? It says in verse 16, And moreover, I saw under the sun the place of judgment. What's under the sun? The earth, right? That wickedness was there, and the place of, ju of, of righteousness, that iniquity was there. Okay? So the, the, the place of judgment is the earth. You receive your judgment in the spirit realm. When your spirit goes back up to the Father, I think that's in, what's that, Ecclesiastes 1 and 12, is it? Um, one second. <sighs> um, that may have brought out in a while. Uh, no, it's Ecclesiastes 12 and 7, that's what it is. Ecclesiastes 12 and 7. It says, then shall the dust return to the earth as it was. Okay, what happens when you die? You get buried. Eventually, the body breaks down, decomposes. <coughs> decomposes and, um, you know, you turn into dust. You know, you open up that coffin after some time. Or you're going to see your skull and bone, right? Because... That spirit is no longer dwelling there. And basic physics, what do you learn? You learn, well, spirit is energy, right? And what do you learn about energy? Energy cannot be destroyed. It can only be, uh, uh, what's it, cr um, created and transferred. So pretty much when you die, there's a transition. When you die, that's the separation of, of you, the, the spirit dwelling in that flesh. But then it, where that spirit goes somewhere, you know. That's why, in my humble opinion, you know, when you have someone that dies, you know, it's, it's a waste of time going to the graveyard, man, to go gr visit their gravestone and go speak to them. Because they're not there, man. They ain't there. The only thing that dwells there is, is, is the remains of their skull and bone. But really, that, that person's spirit is now dwelling in the heavens, man. They've they've appeared before the judgment seat of 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 the of the Lord, right? They've received their judgment. Okay, now they're in the heavens, waiting to come back down through their family line, third and fourth, third and fourth generation of their family line, and to be brought back down here on earth to live out their judgment. So you're basically just making yourself unclean for nothing, man. You know, because when you when you get around dead bodies, you become unclean. <laughs> Okay. So my humble opinion, I don't believe in all that old visit the gravestone and whatnot, man. They're they're in a better place now. You know what did uh what did it say in Psalms eighty four and ten? For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand uh, here in the tents of wickedness. We're here in the tents of wickedness under this under the sun, right? in the earth, right? The the the, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. It says just one day in, in thy courts, what's the heavenly father's courts? The kingdom of heaven, right? Well, you know, the, 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 um, the, the spirit around the heavens, okay? It said, the day in thy courts is better than a thousand uh, 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 in the tents of wickedness, man. So you're here grieving, and, you know, and then, you know, wait, let me just finish this drink. You know, like, I get it, we're in the flesh. So we feel... Certain emotions and, you know, you attach to people and, you know, you miss that idea of not being able to see that person 
for a while because we're going to see that person again. All right, because reincarnation is biblical, it's real. But understand that they're, they're in a better place, man. If 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 the Lord was to ask them, hey, would you, you want me to put you back down in that body? Yeah, you know, you just came out of and, and you just continue living in that wicked world. They'll be like, no, no, Lord. La, la, I want to stay here in the heavens, man. You know, Apostle Paul, I believe it was Apostle Paul, when he was stoned, right? He died, man. And uh, he could see, he saw the, 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 the glory of the kingdom of heaven and, you know, he saw the magnificence and, and, and it was so great that there wasn't even words to describe what he'd seen, you know. Let me, uh, let me try and find that for edification's sake. So, you know, you don't think I'm just talking out my ass. <clears throat> it's a lack of man. Allergies, this, uh... Allergies kicking my ass, man. <laughs> you know, I looked on the weather app. So, uh... It said, um... The pollen was high today, man. So I believe the account is in, oh boy, it's 2 Corinthians 12. I'm going to read this one, but there's also this is another one I'm looking for. Hold on a minute. Bear with me. Man. Salakia. I'm trying to find that I can't in Acts, man. Yeah, um. Hold on. Oh, I know why. <laughs> Don't know. Uh, on the Google search, it was under books. So it just showed me a lot of different things, man. <sighs> so yeah, hold on. Let's bring this out first. This is the book of Acts, chapter 7. And... Fifty five, but he being full of the Holy Spirit looked up steadfastly in the heaven into heaven and saw the glory of the most high and Yahweh Shai standing on the right hand side of Yahweh. <laughs> then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down 
their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon Yahweh, saying, Lord Yahweh Shai, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lay, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he said this, he fell asleep. So, you know, he was being stoned to death. Stephen, and as he was being stoned, he was felt so filled up with the Holy Spirit that he looked up into heaven and he saw the glory of the Most High. He saw Yahweh and he saw Yahweh Shai standing on the right hand side of um, Yahweh, man. Okay. And he, he saw the magnificence of, of, of heaven, how beautiful it was. All right. Well, so did Apostle Paul. Right. When you read Second Corinthians 12. And uh, let's start at um, verse one. It is not expedient for me, doubtless to glory. I will come to visions and revelation of the Lord. I knew a man in Hamashiach about 14 years ago, whether in the body I could not tell or whether out of the body I could not tell. The most I know of such as one caught up to the third heaven. Okay. So, you know, the, was it a spirit that he saw? Was it a man that he saw? All right. He, he, he can't tell. It says, and I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. The most I know if how that he was caught up into paradise, right, into heaven, and heard unspeakable words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. You know, so he heard unspeakable words. He saw, you know, the glory of the kingdom of heaven. And it, it was so magnificent that there wasn't really any English word. No, not English. <laughs> Amen. You know, because at the time, there was, you know, the, the dominant language was, was, the, was the Greek, Hebrew and the Latin. All right. But they were hearing, you know, he was hearing uh, words in the Hebrew in the, you know, because that's, that's the heavenly language, you know, the Lashawan Kodash, the holy tongue. All right, but basically, he there, there was no words to describe what he'd seen. Okay. That's, that's how beautiful and magnificent heaven is, man. It's just like, bro, like, I, I don't even know how to describe it, man. You know, all struggling for words. Okay, so that's where, that's where... Uh, all spirits go when you die, all right, when one dies. So Ecclesiastes 12 and 7 again, then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto the most high who gave it. All right, so YOLO, you only live once? Don't think so. Right. Now, let's go to Exodus. Chapter 34 and verse 6. And it reads, And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord power, merciful and gracious, long suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty. You know, just what does the scripture say? Nahum 1 and 3. The Most High is angry at the wicked. Uh, no, Psalm 7 says that the Most High is angry at the wicked every day. Nahum says how he surely will not acquit the wicked. Uh, so even though you see them prospering for a moment, living their best life forever, that's, that's but for a moment. <laughs> okay? Um. So, and that will by no means clear the guilty visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and fourth generation and moses made haste and bowed his head toward the earth and worshiped because you got a fear power like that you might have, you might have let you been a wicked piece of shit and you live to 100 years old just for you to come back in your next life as a stephen hawking man and stephen hawking he lived quite a long life just just as a fucking it's like, you know, pretty much a cyborg, man. Just tied up to a computer. You stuck in one position. Talking like... Uh, you know, sounding like 
What's that film? That Disney film? Wally. Right? But, but hey, look, man, these devils are wicked as hell, man. Even even as, as fucked up as he was, he still managed to find himself on that fucking island, man. You know, let me not specify, but you, if you know, you know, man. Him being, he's a fucking computer. Tied to a computer, can't even move, right? Can't wipe his own ass. And he still fucking found himself on that island, man. Fucking devil. So so imagine, imagine what the Lord's going to do to him. Uh, this time around, when 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 he brings his spirit back on earth, which you know m- m- more than likely be in the kingdom. Okay, boy, it's all mad. So let's get Isaiah fourteen and twenty one. It says, "Prepare slaughter for his children." For the iniquity of their fathers. Because, you know, you got these, these young Edomites talking about, oh, but yeah, that, you know, slavery, oh, yeah, man, sorry about that, guys. You know, that wasn't me, that was my great, great, great grandfather, my great, great, great grandmother, and whatnot. Well, you don't understand that you are your great, great, great grandfathers and grandmothers coming back, visiting, visiting the iniquity of their fathers onto the third and fourth generation. So you come back. Alright, uh, you know, reincarnation literally means what? Back in the flesh. You know, so you, 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 that was you. That's why it says here in Isaiah 14 and 21, prepare slaughter for his children, for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise, nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. So, you know. You ain't, you ain't gonna, you know, you name countries after yourselves, cities, roads. You got, you know, that 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 statue in America, them them four faces. All right, that that ain't gonna happen in the kingdom, man. Not Edomites will never be exalted again. All right, so this is this is pretty much your last, your last, you know, hoo ha, before you're subject to a thousand years of slavery and then uh, uh, extinction. Okay. So this is Ecclesiastes 8, verse 11. And it reads, Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. And that's why, again, you've got you know, that wicked nigger on the block or just wicked people in general who... It just seems like, oh, you're just a wicked piece of shit. And uh, you just live a good life, right? So therefore, their hearts is fully set to do evil because they're like, well, I've done this a hundred times. I've done it 99 times. Sure did a hundredth time. I'll be all right. And then you do it the hundredth time and you're through, right? So though a sinner do evil a hundred times and his days be prolonged, yet surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear the most high. Which fear before him, but it shall not be well with the wicked. Neither shall he prolong his days, which are as a shadow, because he feareth not before the most high. So don't worry about the wicked, man. You know, read Psalm 73. It tells you about the prosperity of the wicked and how the Lord has set them in slippery places, man. So eventually they, that whole wickedness is going to come and slap them right back in the face. And it's going to be like, damn. All right, so so don't envy the wicked, man. What does it say in the book of Psalms, chapter 37? This is Psalms 37. And... Uh, and 16. A little... That a righteous man hath Is better than the riches of many wicked So, you know, having food and raiment Let us therewith be content Okay, that's that's the attitude we have to have Because once you are wicked You are tempted to fall into many lusts and temptations And because you've got the money, the power to do it You know, you can really just fully act on, 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 on You know, your wicked desires, man But if you don't Then, you know 
that reduces your chances of acting upon, you know, what the, the doings of the flesh, you know, because the, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So Psalms 37 and 16, a little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked, for the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholdeth the righteous. And right, that's just that. You know, that's why it says many are the afflictions of, of, of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth them out of them all. That's in Psalms 34. All right. It also says here in Psalms 37 and 25, I have been young and now I'm old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. So the Lord always makes a way, man. And you always got to look back at your past trials and tribulations where you thought this is the end of the road. And the Lord made a way somehow in some way. And always remember the goodness of the Lord, man. You see? Right. Let's hold Matthew 16. Keeping it on topic. Matthew 16 and verse 13. When Yahawashai came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? They said, Some say thou art John the Baptist, some Elijah, which John the Baptist was Elijah. Right, and others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said, "So they understood reincarnation back then. See, they weren't, they weren't no like, like, like you know, you, these people claim they're religious, right? You know, you speak to a Muslim, you speak to a Christian. Oh, do you believe in reincarnation? Nah. Well, I don't know what Bible. I don't know what text you're reading because." We've gone through quite a few scriptures within the Bible, proven reincarnation. So, fuck you talking about, you know? Anyways, let's read on Matthew sixteen and fifteen. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Hamashiach, the Anointed One, the Son of the Living Power. <laughs> and Yahweh answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Bar Jonah. For flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And who was who was Peter? Man, Peter was King David. Which is why when they came to take Yahweh Shai, you know, when it was it was time to, you know, when it was time for Yahweh Shai to go through his darkest hour, when he was, you know, betrayed by 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 Judas. Okay, Judas Iscariot. Um. What did what 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 did uh, uh uh Peter do? He he hey man he slew he cut off that man's ear with a sword man he took the sword out of the sheath and yin, sliced his ear clean off man like that's King David right there because remember King David that was a mighty man of war man like there's many men like like you got these youth out here you know they do what they call drillings right. You know, they will empty the whole clip on a on a on an individual and, and not even one shot will hit him, man. Instead you, you killed the old lady, you know, the the bystander walking by and you completely missed. You stab up a man and you know, you, you ain't getting him in the right place, you just swinging him, you know, spraying and praying as they call it. Well that's with the shooting, but the stabbing, you're just kinda just just swiping and and, and, and hoping, man. You know, just, just, just in and out, just hoping you get something that would do him in. But there's no precision. But but Peter, on the other hand, he, he was precise with the sword, man. Took that out. Sh it came off clean. You know? Uh, clean, man. Yahweh shout out to cut him, man. Yeah, live by the sword or die by the sword. You know, picked up the ear. <laughs> the spiritual power put it back on him and 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 you know this just you know just uh, uh uh faced his, his darkest hour man face it like a man and we have to walk in that same stead okay but yeah that that goes to show you that even simon that 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 was uh that was king david man okay <laughs> So now let's read Matthew 11. And 
and 12. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven uh, suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the law. <coughs> 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 For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John, all right, John the Baptist. And if you receive this, this is Elijah, or Elias in the Greek, which was for to come. Okay, so again, another. It said, "If ye will receive it, because a Christian might just read that and just walk right past it." And not receive it. And then you ask them uh, 30 seconds after. So you do you believe in reincarnation now? No. Well, we just, we just fucking said it, man. That's why I said, if you will receive it. That's the disclaimer. If you will receive it. The spirit has to be working with you. has to be supping with you, man. In order for you to receive it. If the spirit ain't supping with you, you ain't going to receive it, my man. And that's just the truth. So I went going back and forth, man. So what if some don't believe? Like, get your ass down the road, man. All right. So I did unbelief make the faith of the most high without effect. Your how forbid. Come on, man. Get together, man. Matthew 17 and 11. And Yahweh Shai said unto them, Elias, Elias, which again is Elijah, Elias in the Greek, truly shall uh, first come and restore all things. But I say unto you that Elias is come already and they knew not and they knew him not. <laughs> but I've done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise shall also the son of man suffer of them. Then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. Wow. So the Spirit was, was supping with the disciples, man, for them to receive that. You, know, you get that light bulb moment. Oh, so Elijah, so John the Baptist is Elijah coming back. Which Elijah coming back in this day and age that we're currently in is uh, Elder High Priest Abba Bivens, man. Fits the prophecies so beautifully. You know, in Revelation 11, it says that after 350 years, the spirit of life shall enter into them. Okay. Linking up with Ezekiel 37. And, uh, you know, you do the maths, right? You know, 1619. Okay, because that was a, a very prominent year, a very well noted year. In terms, you know, when it comes to, to our slavery, right? You know, and then you add, because uh, it says three and a half days, which is 350 years. And, and that brings you to 1969. And it's heavy because this truth sprung out of New York, you know, beginning with Elder High Priest Abba Bivens in, in the late 60s, right? Early 70s. Right? And the math said 1969. Okay. You know, um... Because Elder High Priest Abba Bivens was around other that knew they were Israelites, but they, they only, you know, dealt with the Old Testament. The Spirit jumped on Elder High Priest Abba Bivens to go into the New Testament, and, and, and you know, the rest was history from there. You know, it's very, 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 very brief explanation, which is, of course, led us to where we are today, which is why you read First Thessalonians, you know, First Timothy. Uh, where is it? First Timothy five and seventeen. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. So now, currently, you know you got elder apostle Ha, and the likes on down. Uh, you know, who are uh, uh, spearheading this truth, but before them, they had their elders. Okay, which one of the notable figures was Elder High Priest Abba Bivens because he was John the Baptist or Elijah coming back and it fits the prophecies. So you see, YOLO, right? Like, really? You only live once? Really? 
That's how boring a mundane behavior is. You just do Monday to Friday, nine to five, party on the weekend, go on holidays, annual leave, two weeks a year, die, and then you, you're just black. You know, you got you got people that believe. You know, you just die, and it's just black. That's it. You're just gone. You're just sleeping forever. Some people believe you're just in heaven forever. Some people believe you're in hell forever, which is all wrong. <laughs> All go to the same place, whether you're good or bad. You die. You appear before the judgment seat of the Lord. You receive your judgment in the heavens. You live your judgment here under the place of, uh, 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 of judgment, which is here on the earth. You see? So, uh, one more precept. I'm going to close out. This is the book of Malachi, chapter 4 and verse 5. And it reads, Behold, I will send you Elijah. All right? Which was also John the Baptist, which in this day came back as Elder High Priest Arbor Bivens. It says, Behold, I will send you Elijah, the prophet, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. That's like you see, this book is not just words on the pages, man. It described the day of the Lord as a great and dreadful day, man. And before that day comes, the Lord sent back his prophet Elijah, man, to, to, to wake up the elect, which we call ourselves the hopeful elect, in hopes that we will be able to escape the great and dreadful day of the Lord, man. Like, I'm like, that's heavy, man. You know, like, hey, man, I'm still a baby in this truth, but yo, like, sometimes you just sit there and you think, like, raw, like, this, this, this. See, like, our history and our heritage, yo, it's, it's heavy, man. It's heavy. It makes sense why Esau tried to plagiarize and, and hide it from us, man. You know? Because this is, our heritage is heavy. This is weighty stuff, man. And Lord willing, we're of the elect. When we, when we are translated into our new bodies, man, and you know, you you know, you go to camp, you go to Arkham, you know, Arkham that we listen to around the world, we see you're going to find out who they were in their past. Like, oh, so all this time I was prophesying next to Jeremiah, all this time I was, I was Daniel. You know, like, yo, man, yo, yo, this is crazy, man. So that like, fuck out of here, that like YOLO bullshit, man. That's that, that's some dead weight stuff. This is heavyweight stuff, man. Yo. All praises to Yahweh Bashim Yashai, man. So why do Yahweh Bashim Yashai for making me an Israelite, man? Wow, man. Our history is, is, is heavy, man. Hey, man. If I was Esau, maybe I'd do the same too. <laughs> you know? Malachi 4 and 5 again. Behold, I will send you Elijah, the prophet. Before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children. And the heart of the children to their fathers. Lest I smite the earth with a curse. And the Lord is coming to smite the earth with a curse. And and, and, and he's also coming to redeem the elect of his people, man. <laughs> okay. So, hopefully this lesson cleared that up, man. There ain't no... Such thing as YOLO, you only live once. You know, let's go back to that post. I'm kind of glad you only live once. I ain't doing this again. You are doing this again. And let's let's make this clear. If you're an Israelite, you're going to receive your judgment here on this side and you're coming back in the kingdom of heaven, uh, into the glory, into eternal life. But underneath the elect, you're going to have your head down for a bit. You're going to be ashamed. But ultimately, you're still going to be good. Now, if you're a heathen, you are going to be subject to slavery. Read Revelation chapter 13 and 10. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. All right? I'll make the rules. That's that. If you're an Edomite specifically, you're going to have a thousand years of captivity, slavery, and then you're going to be done away with, pursuing to Obadiah verse 18. As for you other nations, you're going to be in permanent uh, servitude unto the nation of Israel. You know, after the thousand years of hardcore slavery, you're still going to be our subjects. You're still going to be under us. But, you know, we're going to lighten the load on you. You're going to have your, 
own bit of land to dwell and whatnot, but you're going to give tributary and going to follow after our ways, you're still going to go off because you're in the flesh and we're going to judge you for it, but that's just going to be the sentence forever and ever and ever and ever. And the Lord, of course, with his wonderful creations, you know, we're just going to, like, the kingdom of heaven is just going to be an ever-expanding, like, just ever-expanding, improving and just, you know, constantly getting better, constantly being exposed to new things, new planets, like just man, our man, our kingdom is gonna be the best kingdom, man. It's like forget King Solomon's right, time, that forty years, right? Hey, man, what the Lord is about to do this time round is gonna be like the king, you know, the kingdom during the time of King Solomon on steroids, man. You just wait and see, man. All right, so yeah, man, I'm gonna wrap it up there. You know, I pray, Lord willing, this lesson has been edifying. And until the next time, I say shalom.